Thank you everybody for coming along and joining myself and Dr. Bill Andrews for the presentation on the truth about aging. And what I find most interesting about this is that most people, even us in this industry, don't actually know what the truth about aging is. I remember many, many moons ago now, when I first met Bill, I had plenty of light bulb moments just learning and trying to absorb everything that I could from this wonderful man. Um, but it just felt right because there were so many things that I knew about how we were treating skin that were so wrong. So going back to the fundamental causes of aging um, really cemented that for me, that I, I suddenly made sense of it. Now, Dr. Bill Andrews, I'm lucky enough to call him a business colleague, call him a friend. I've known him for a very long time now. Um, he is a great human being. And I say that because I'm always asked afterwards, oh, what's Bill really like? Um, Bill's a great guy. Not only is he super intelligent and the best in his field, but he also is really fun with a great sense of humor. Bill is the president of Sierra Sciences and he led the team at Geron Corporation that actually discovered the telomerase enzyme and gene and I, I'm blown away every time I say that that I get to hang out with someone who identified part of our DNA um, it really does humble me to be able to say that. Um, Bill so uh, welcome everybody I'm glad I'm here as I've said as Rachel just said I've been working with Rachel for quite some time now. Um, the, uh, the title of the talk that I'm giving today is the truth about aging and to make to explain to you why I'm qualified to be talking about such a thing. I'm gonna describe who I am for a bit. Uh, first of all, I do run a company called Sierra Sciences, founded in 1991. The sole purpose of the company is to find a cure for aging. Now, my company doesn't sell things. Uh, we just do basic research. Uh, we are a company that invents the things that other companies uh, uh, test and market. So uh, yeah, don't look for me selling anything, I just do the research. So <clears throat> I'm a medical researcher. I have a PhD in molecular genetics and evolution. And that, that kind of is very important to mention because that's what aging is. Aging, everything about aging has to do with our genes and evolution. Why, you know, I'm gonna be talking about later about evolutionarily, why do we age? Uh, I've been in biotech uh, for 41 years now. Uh, but the last 30 years have been specifically focused just on aging. I've been interested in aging my entire life, but as a profession, I've only been into it, I've only been doing it for 30 years, which is quite some time. Uh, my background is, is not just aging. I've done a lot of work in cancer, heart disease, inflammation, and aging. In fact, I was awarded second place for National Inventor of the Year in the United States in my cancer research. So I do know a lot about cancer. Uh, I feel like I need to know more about more about aging. I've been featured in several documentaries, uh, one called The Immortalist, another one called The High, and one coming out later this year called Longevity. So in all these cases, I'm not just a minor part of the documentary, I'm the key part of the documentary. So I recommend you watch those if you want to learn more about anything I forget to say today. Uh, I'm also an author of two books called Curing Aging and Tool in the Awakening. Uh, both of them can be acquired on Amazon.com. I'm not certain about Australia and New Zealand, but in um, the US, you can get those. And I'm always, I'm always uh, having them available if anybody just wants to reach out to me. I had quite a successful career in biotech. I've been in it for, as I said, 41 years. But I've actually been, I was one of the inventors of the original human growth hormone. Uh, Prochymosin, tissue plasminogen activator, on and on. These are a lot of big blockbusters in the biotech field. Towards the bottom, uh, you can see Ameltastat and TAM818, which are both products related to telomere biology. And uh, there's a lot of things on this list uh, that, are, that I didn't include on this list. But the bottom line is that now for the last 30 years, all I do is work on trying to solve the aging process. And why is that? Well, that's because I'm somebody that's obsessed with the idea of curing aging. This is William Shatner as a 91-year-old and as a 30-year-old. And uh, I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I have not succeeded in my mission until I can make William Shatner and myself look like we can feel and behave like we're 25 again. Now, also, 
when that day comes along and we do actually make first contact with life from outer space, I want to be there. And this is something that excites me a lot. And I think, and I don't want to miss out on this, but I think the key to making all this happen is related to the telomere. And so I'll be talking about the telomere and its role in aging uh, for the next few minutes. <clears throat> but first, what is a telomere? For those of you that don't know. Um, to know what a telomere, to explain what a telomere is, we need to zoom in on a human being. And the first thing we see is that a human is made up of a hundred trillion cells. And every one of these cells age. We age because our cells age. If we zoom in even further, we find that every cell contains a nucleus. And inside these nuclei are found these blue things called chromosomes. And this is just zooming in on one of these chromosomes. Chromosome is made up of two long DNA molecules. DNA is like a long string of beads. Uh, the sequence of beads is what actually tells us what hair color and eye color, et cetera, that we have. This DNA molecule is typically about 100 million bases in length. The beads that I just mentioned are called bases. And because this thing's so long, it's actually coiled up like a slinky inside of each of the arms. There's two arms here, the top arm and a bottom arm. Each one of those contain this 100 million bases of uh, DNA. Now, I want you to think of that long string of beads as a shoelace now. And we all know that at the caps of our shoelaces, we have these things called aglets that actually protect our shoelaces from falling apart. But the tips of our DNA molecules, we have the same thing. They're called telomeres, and they're shown here in yellow. These yellow telomeres are the aglets of our chromosomes. They serve essentially the same role that the aglets on our shoelaces do. If we zoom in on one of these telomeres, we unravel the slinky. Now we, we find that telomere is about 15,000 bases in length, at least when we're first conceived. And this is where all the problems begin, because as our cells start to divide, at least in humans, each and every time our cells divide, the telomeres get a little bit shorter. So we're conceived at, at 15,000 bases, and then we have so much cell division, by the time we're born, our telomeres already shortened down to 10,000 bases. But that's okay because that's like cutting one third of the aglet off your shoelace off and your shoelace is still fine. But the problem doesn't end there. The problem is that we still have a lot of growing up to do. We have a lot of wounds to heal. We get infected with a lot of pathogens that our immune system has to fight to involve cell division. And when the telomeres get down to 5,000 bases, we die of old age. And that's just a, a fact. It's, I'm gonna just, before I say more, I'm gonna review that again. We are conceived at 15,000 bases, we're born at 10,000 bases, and we die of all age at 5,000 bases. And there's absolutely nothing we can do about this yet. We can slow it down with a few different treatments, but there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. That's what I'm working on. Uh, this is not a theory anymore. Uh, this is absolutely every lab in the world that's working with human cells in a petri dish know that when they grow the cells in cultures, the cells can only divide a certain number of times. And that's because every time they divide, the telomeres get a little bit shorter. And when the telomeres get down to 5,000 bases, the cells in the petri dish cannot, cannot divide anymore. This is something that's known all over the world. Nobody contradicts this. It's, a, it's not a theory anymore, it's a fact. If you do the math, you realize how much a telomere shortens every single time a cell divides, you can figure out that if you have the perfect genetics and lead the perfect lifestyle, you have only a maximum lifespan of the health span of 125 years, because that is the maximum number of times a cell can divide in the normal rates the cells divide. But since none of us actually have the perfect genetics and lead the perfect lifestyle, None of us will actually live to be 125 without solving this telomere shortening problem. Another problem with telomere shortening is that when telomeres get really short, it actually causes the chromosomes to become very mutated. The mutation rate skyrockets when telomeres are very short. And this causes a lot of diseases, including especially cancer. So we don't want to let the telomeres get short, not just affecting aging, but it also affects health in a lot of different ways, increasing disease, et cetera. 
So as an example, I'd like to focus on just skin because it's, it's, this is true for every cell in our body, but I'm just gonna use the skin as an example. And I'm gonna zoom in on a piece of the epidermis here. And in the epidermis are you know, a lot of uh, keratinocytes or keratinocytes, depending on how you pronounce them. Um, but they form the basal liberal layer of the keratinocytes forms what are called reedy ridges. And at the bottom of every reedy ridge, well, and the reedy ridges are like, think of them like eggs, egg crates. They're like, they're like egg crates. At the bottom of every reedy ridge is found the basal stem cell. And that's the cell that actually leads to producing all the other cells in the epidermis. So that cell divides and divides more. But the problem is that every time these cells divide, every time that basal stem cell divides, the telomeres get shorter. And as a result, that basal stem cell can only divide about 50 times. That's true in humans. Now, other organisms such as mice, that's not true. Actually, in cases of my skin, the skin of a mouse, you can find that their cells sometimes actually behave like they're immortal. And that leads to a lot of confusion by a lot of people thinking that humans are the same way. But humans do suffer from this telomere shortening problem that I discussed. And as a result, our basal stem cells can only divide 50 times. And this causes our skin to get thin when the, when the, cell, when the cell divides, after it's divided 50 times, our skin gets thin, the reedy ridges flatten out, um, and in, our, in the dermis below, uh, the collagen and elastin decreases and, and causes a lot of the skin problems that we're typically used to. For more on this, you can read the, I think the best study ever published on this is called The Cellular and Molecular Biology of Skin Aging by Michael West, uh, published in 1994, which goes in great detail about all the stuff I just mentioned. So the bottom line about telomere shortening in humans is that there's, there are a lot of things that are probably causing aging, but no matter what else we do to treat aging, aging will never be cured unless we also stop this telomere shortening because this is a fact. This is not a theory. This is something that's affecting all of us. We are having telomere shortening and it is causing us to age, even if there are other things causing us to age too. But we have to stop this one if we're gonna ever be successful at stopping aging. The good news is there is an enzyme that as Rachel mentioned, I led the research that discovered this enzyme called telomerase uh, back in the 1990s. Uh, this is a cartoon, the green squiggly thing is the DNA molecule now shown as a double helix. And telomerase is this factory looking, factory looking thing that's bound to the very end of the chromosome. And so whatever, what's happening here is that every time the telomeres get shorter when the cell divides, telomerase will lengthen those telomeres. But this is only true in our reproductive cells, at least in humans. And the reason why we need this enzyme in our reproductive cells is because if we didn't have it, our children would be born with shorter telomeres than we have. Their children would be born with shorter telomeres than they have. And we would have been extinct as a species millions of years ago. Okay, so as a result, we have this enzyme telomerase that keeps the telomeres from shortening in our reproductive cells. So taking this enzyme, uh, when we first discovered it in the 1990s, we did a lot of studies to actually look at the benefits of actually providing the uh, telomerase to other cells besides our reproductive cells. And so doing so, we were able to show that we could actually reverse aging in human cells in vitro. So we took human skin cells, fibroblasts found in the dermis. We took those cells and we put telomerase into them and we found that they not only stopped the aging, but their aging was reversed in every way imaginable. We also took human skin and grew it on the back of a mouse. And when we, when we treated this human skin on the back of the mouse with telomerase, we found that the human skin got young in every way imaginable. And then we engineered mice. Now I'd mentioned before that mice don't actually age the same way humans do, especially in their skin, but that's throughout their body, they don't age they do, they do not have telomere shortening. This, this, a lot of people get confused by this and think that we age like mice do, but we don't. Mice do not have telomere shortening. They do not have, they have telomerase produced in all their cells. So in order to do this study, we first had to create a mouse strain that didn't have telomerase 
and did have telomere shortening. And when we, we allowed these mice to age, just like humans age, and then, then suddenly produce telomerase, we saw age reversal in these mice in, again, every way imaginable. Now, there's a lot of theories on why we age, but none of them, not a single one has ever done any one of these things that I just mentioned. So how are we actually gonna now apply this to humans? Uh, and so the research that we're doing at Sierra Sciences so we're taking advantage of the fact that we, since our reproductive cells do produce telomerase, all of our cells have the gene for telomerase. This is shown here. The blue thing is the gene. The gray, the gray bar is the chromosome. Uh, and in this, in this particular example, the gene is shut off by a protein called a repressor. So what we are doing is, we've been doing this for years now. We've been testing uh, small molecule drugs, natural products, everything we can get our hands on. We've been looking for anything that will get inside of a cell, bind to that repressor, dislodge it, and allow the telomerase gene to turn on and start producing telomerase. This involves a lot of technologies here in our company, cell biology, molecular biology, et cetera, uh, to design the molecules, study the molecules. When we actually get a bunch of molecules to test, we put it through our high throughput robot robotic screening system. You can see the picture of two of our robots at the bottom here. These robots can test 4,000 different chemicals a day. And then when we actually find chemicals that will induce telomerase, they go back, those chemicals go back to those various departments and reevaluated. The information is analyzed. They use that information to design new molecules and they're put back and forth through this robotic system. And we just keep getting better and better uh, hits. Anytime we find a molecule that actually causes the cell to produce telomerase, we call that a hit. So far, we've tested 350,000 different chemicals through this screening protocol. We have found 900 different chemicals and natural products that actually do induce telomerase production inside of regular human cells to some level. We've been able to divide these things into 39 different families. So we are seeing that we we do have a structure activity relationship showing that we are narrowing in on something that could actually eventually cure aging. The strongest thing that we have found so far produces about 16% of the telomerase that is needed to stop telomere shortening. And when we get something that's, that's 100%, that will stop telomere shortening. And when we go higher than 100%, that should actually reverse telomere shortening and make telomeres longer reversing aging is what we hope. Our strongest chemical so far is something called C0314818. And you probably have heard of this as TAM818. It's also called TAM818. And that is the most potent telomerase inducer on the planet nowadays. So I've only scratched the surface talking about telomeres. Uh, I do have a nice video where I go into a lot of details about a lot of things about telomeres. The video is called Everything About Telomeres. If you go to my website, www.crsi.com, you can see it. The bad news is it's two hours long, but the good news is that it begins with a table of contents, uh, which kind of you can scroll through this table of contents and find out what is it you want to learn about with telomeres and uh, go to that particular time period and just listen to what I say, because I what I do is essentially cover all the questions that everybody always asks me at my presentations. And this is more for a medical doctor audience. This is continuing medical education presentation that I gave a few years ago. But again, that's that, that's called video, everything about telomeres and it's found at www.crsi.com. Okay, so <clears throat> that's that's what I'm mostly what I'm going to say about telomeres, but I do want to talk about aging for a little bit because that is something that I feel like I am quite an expert in. With my background in molecular genetics and evolution, I have a very unique perspective on the aging process, which I think very few people have a very, have, nobody can actually uh, argue with these ideas that I have, but I want to talk about what is aging, why we age, what causes us to age, and how we can treat aging. And First, let me just say, nobody really knows the answers to these questions. It's like everybody knows what aging is, but we really don't. We, there's no way to measure it. We don't have any way to define it. So I'm gonna be not telling you exactly what the answers are. I'm gonna be telling you what my best guesses are. 
And I think these are really good guesses. And I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go really fast through these. Uh, but first question is what is aging? Well, there's a lot of biomarkers of aging. There's, you can go to an anti-aging doctor, he can test your blood for a lot of different things. Uh, there's all kinds of markers for aging, but none of them really have shown that they are really affecting aging or have anything to do with aging. They're just correlated with aging. So I, I think about aging in a simpler way. I just say, I think everybody knows which photo of William Shatner was taken first here. And so we do know what aging is. We just can't actually put our finger on it to exactly say what's the difference between these two photos. Um, <clears throat> but I, I call that aging. And I call that the cure for aging. And even though we can't really measure it quantitatively, we can measure it qualitatively. And I call that uh, qualitatively quantitative. So that's what we call, we, we, here at Sierra Sciences, we give things like this, what's called a QQ score for qualitatively quantitative, because we can't measure it. All we can do is kind of say, well, we know one is younger than the other. I call this the William Shatner test. And this is something that as far as I'm concerned, nobody will have ever cured aging until somebody passes the William Shatner test. As long as you see William Shatner looking 91, actually he looks 60 in my opinion, but he's 91 years old. If he's, if he's looking a day over 25, nobody's cured aging yet. Okay, so next question is why do we age? <clears throat> and this is more of an evolutionary kind of thing. This is where my background in evolution comes in really handy and why I tend to have a opinion very different from 90% uh, of the people that discuss why we aging. It's because I, I think they don't understand evolution as well as I do. But one of the key things of evolution is being able to survive a rapidly changing environment. And a successful species, every species that exists on the planet today survived lots of rapidly changing environments because it had something unique about it that allowed it to be able to survive. And the thing that was unique about them was that their genes were shuffled, okay? So the more a species shuffles its genes through mating, the more likely it is to survive a rapidly changing environment because by shuffling the genes provides variety within a species. And the more variety that exists within a species, the more likely that a member or one or more members of that species will survive when the, when the environment changes rapidly. So the more shuffling of genes occurs in the offsprings when the parents are eliminated, okay? So, so the bottom line is more shuffling of genes occurs if the offspring are allowed to interbreed than if the parents are allowed to rebreed. So a species that eliminates its old, knocks off their old, is more likely to survive because there'll be more variation of the genes within a species. And so, as I said, a species that eliminates is always, is gonna have more gene shuffling, more variation, and is more likely to survive. And bottom line, that is why we age. I put it in simpler terms. <clears throat> There's no evolutionary advantage to living longer than it takes to raise your young. After you've raised your young, you are in the way. You are, you are interfering with the survival of the species, and so it's best to have you eliminated. And, and that's why we age. Okay, so next thing I wanna talk about is what causes us to age. And a lot of things that cause us to age, there is the environment, oxidative stress and inflammation most notably. Uh, there's also genetics factor. A lot of us have good genetics. A lot of us have genetics that are pretty bad that causes ages to be accelerated. And then there's also, as I mentioned, telomere shortening. Now these are really, the main causes of aging. You've heard a lot of other things that they're really initial symptoms of aging. That, and, and but these initial symptoms of aging are also causes of aging. Those include cell senescence, which a lot of you have heard of, mitochondria dysfunction, altered gene expression, on and on and on. There's a lot of different things, but these are mostly the symptoms of aging, which also contribute to being, and they become the causes of aging. The, of course, the ultimate symptoms of aging are age-related decline in health, decline in appearance, and death. But, but what we really need to focus on mostly is the things on the left, the environment, genetics, and telomere shortening. 
And so telomere shortening is one of the key things, as I mentioned, that I'm focusing on now. How can we treat aging? <clears throat> There's a lot of different things. Uh, we can minimize the impacts of the environment. Most of these are related to the three things I just mentioned on the left of the last screen. Minimize the impacts of the environment, regulate gene expression, do gene therapy, correct cellular and tissue damage, gene editing, stem cells, cryonics. If all else fails, get yourself frozen and maybe a hundred years from now, somebody can figure out how to thaw you out and, and give you a longer lifespan. Whole brain emulation is, is of course, one of those last resort things that Elon Musk is actually investing a lot into right now. And that's where if you suddenly die, your brain's uploaded to a computer and you wake up as a computer and later hopefully your brain's transferred to a new body. There's telomere maintenance, and then there's also healthy lifestyle choices, which is probably one of the most important things all of us can be doing. The things around the squares are the things that Sierra Sciences is working on now. And one way or another, we're gonna get uh, some progress done in here. But <clears throat> I wanna end with saying, and I think I already said this, there is no way to measure the slowing of aging. Okay, so we really can't, and you can measure the slowing of the symptoms of aging, okay, such as skin aging and other things. But, but I'm, my, my company is focused more on aging as in general. Okay, so we have, as a result, have come up with a lot of discoveries, such as I mentioned, Tamri and eight. But our focus is on trying to figure out uh, how to actually cure aging. A cure aging is how to reverse aging. And so there's no way to measure the slowing of aging, which makes our research very difficult to do. So the only way that we will ever know if we've ever done anything to actually uh, cure aging is to actually reverse it. And when that happens, we will have succeeded at curing aging. And when you see William Shatner cooking 25 again, that'll be a way to celebrate. And hopefully I will too. So uh, if you want to hear more from me, go to my website at www.crsi.com and feel free to email me at eandrews.crsi.com. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Bill. Um, that was amazing. And I know that people were probably hovering over the Q&A button and then thought, oh no, he's just answered that for me because you've answered, explained and answered just so many questions so well. And um, I think that's actually one of the reasons that I love listening to you, no matter how many times I've listened to you, is that you just explain things in such a great way. You make it really easy to understand. So thank you. And um, thanks thank for you. sharing your email and your, um, your video on CRSI, because I know there's a lot of people here who will probably be taking themselves um, and their staff members to your website and pulling out the bits that they think will be amazing for their staff members to listen to. So thank you again. So um, I'm gonna take a moment to now talk to you about what I've spent the last decade learning, which is how to translate the information that Bill has discovered and also that he's shared with us into how we practice as skin professionals, because there's a lot that has to change if we wanna do that responsibly and in the best way possible. So I myself have been working in the skin industry for 21 years now, um, and I've been working with Bill for I think it's a decade isn't it Bill it's been a while oh god I think it's more than that yeah <laughs> it's been, been a long time so um I also am the person the company who has licensed TAM 818 from Dr Bill Andrews and we have put it into a skincare serum so Bill's testing was irrefutable as to what TAM 818 did in a petri dish However, what we wanted to then do was to put it on skin topically to see what would happen there. Because you don't take a discovery from Dr. Bill Andrews and then just guess that it's going to work. You have to prove everything. Um, otherwise, you don't get to move forward. So we spent about a quarter of a million dollars on our topical testing and had our One Truth 818 serum with TAM 818 in it, independently tested over in Italy. And at the same time, we ran some clinical trials in New Zealand so that we could actually talk to people about using um, One Truth with TAM 818 and what it did for their skins. So to my knowledge, that's still the largest study ever 
performed on topical telomerase activation. And it shows that with a small molecule like TAM818, that it does work. But firstly, if you think about what we were taught about aging, it is completely backwards to what aging is. And it really does frustrate me about the skincare industry because telomeres were discovered in the 1930s and the Hayflick limit, which is the, the number of cell divisions a cell can go through before it dies, like Bill explained, that was um, actually discovered by Professor Leonard Hayflick. So he named it the Hayflick limit. That was discovered in the 50s. So scientists have known for several decades now that cells do not have a finite life and that speeding up cell division is actually accelerating aging. Yet you and I have been taught over and over again by product companies that the way to get a young skin is to speed up cell division. Now, I just have a simple mantra, and that is that cell division equals aging. So when people are having uh, treatments performed on them that cause really harsh damage, we heal from damage through cell division. Yep, they're going to look better because all of those new cells have come to the surface faster. But you are accelerating the aging process. And like Bill says, this is fact. This is not disputed anymore. It's it's irrefutably proven. So if we're to keep on practicing like that, it's with a responsibility that we're not doing anything to try to counter the damage that we're doing to these people's aging. So we've been told that the causes of aging are UV radi radiation and smoking. Those aren't the cause of aging. However, they do accelerate aging. So I'm not saying go ahead and start doing them, um, but they're not the root cause of aging. But we've also been taught that old cells sitting on the surface of the skin causes aging. And that's not actually correct. I mean, that doesn't give you a very nice texture to your skin, um, and it might make you look a little bit more wrinkly than you are, but it is not a cause of aging. We're not doing anyone any good by melting that off and causing blisters on their face at the same time as was popular back in the 1980s. Thank goodness we've moved on from that. But when you learn about the process of aging from a molecular biologist, it's quite different to what we've been told aging is from the product companies who've been supplying us. And that does make me very sad. Just to recap, as Bill said, the cause of aging is in our DNA, on the ends of our telomeres. And some of us are very visual people out there. So Bill had great slides actually, but I just thought I'd keep this one in here for me too. And it's about cell division. So your cells will divide and divide and divide until they no longer can at that 5,000 base pairs. And then they become a senescent cell. Now it's quite cutely called a zombie cell. And I do like that term because I think it does really suit it because these zombie cells will start wreaking havoc. They can't function properly. And sadly, they start encouraging healthy cells into senescence a little bit faster, just like a zombie might. So we wanna keep telomeres as long as possible for as long as possible. And then when they become zombie cells, if we can, we do wanna flush those out of our system. But this is the cause of aging. There are other things which will accelerate it and other things which will slow it down, but this is the cause of aging. So let's talk about those cells with critically short telomeres in terms of our skin. So they can't function like a healthy young cell. They don't produce collagen, they don't produce elastin, and their melanin goes haywire. So for many of us, that means that they start just vomiting pigmentation onto the surface of the skin. And for others, it means that they stop producing pigment whatsoever or both. And you can get that really mottled look all over your face. And you know, even somebody with not one wrinkle on their face can have that uneven mottled look and it does really age them. And it is an aging problem. It's caused from cells that are not functioning properly due to critically short or very shortened telomeres. So you can see that the longer your telomeres are, the more likely they're gonna be able to do the opposite of these things listed here. So, these are all conditions of short telomeres. So even wrinkles, I mean, some might argue that the sun caused my wrinkles, but UV radiation can damage telomeres and DNA to make them shorten. So at the root cause of it, 
yes, the UV radiation has caused the wrinkles, but it's still due to the DNA damage and the telomere shortening. The loose skin is because your cells aren't producing the elastin anymore, the sensitivity, the enlarged pores, and pigmentation, which is a big one, because as skin therapists, we haven't been treating pigmentation as an aging issue. We've just been treating it as a melanocyte pigmentation issue and, and holding on quite separately. And the way we've been told to treat it is basically by blasting as much of the color off your face as possible and then waiting for it to repair. But the problem is that every time you make your skin repair, those cells have to divide. So the cells are aging. So they are less likely to be able to cope with the environment on the outside that might be causing the melanocytes to produce more pigmentation. So if you wanna treat pigmentation, you literally have to go to the root cause of it and re-lengthen those telomeres if possible so that the melanocytes can act like young melanocytes again and not go haywire. And then the color on the surface of the skin that's gonna take care of itself anyway in the natural desquamation process. But just removing more and more and more skin is only gonna age the skin faster. It's never gonna stop the cause of the pigmentation. So I really would like you to start thinking of pigmentation as an aging issue caused by short telomeres. Because that's a big one for us. A lot of um, clients are coming to see us for that. So how do we activate telomerase? Um, when Bill discovered telomerase, it was called the greatest discovery since antibiotics by Popular Science Magazine. That's how huge this is. Now, um, it sounds very twee to call it, you know, the fountain of youth, but if there is something that can go on and on and on and make you immortal, it is likened to the fountain of youth. And telomerase is the closest that we can come to that. So after years and years of investigation and $33 million, over 350,000 chemicals screened, number 314,818, was TAM 818. And um, that's actually a way that we gave a little bit of a nod to Bill's tenacity, putting the 818 on the end there. And TAM stands for telomerase activating molecule, because it's really important to know, because I'm seeing this more now, products coming out saying with telomerase or with telomeres. Now you can't take telomerase or a telomere and shove it in through your skin. It just does not work. If somebody could extract telomerase out of something else's genes, big if and all sorts of wrongs, but let's just say they did and then rubbed it on your face, the telomerase molecule itself is just too big. It couldn't even penetrate the skin. So it's really important to know that telomerase must be activated and used within the cell. Otherwise, what someone is trying to tell you is just simply not true. So the TAM stands for telomerase activating molecule and the 818, just a nod to the tenacity that it took to actually be discovered. What happens when you activate telomerase on the skin? So all of those conditions that I talked about are looked after in one foul swoop because we're not just trying to mop up the mess that aging made, we're going to the root cause of aging. So you can see here that pigmentation is tackled, wrinkles are tackled, um, I don't even know how to explain this. I was asked this the other day, but, but dark circles under the eyes are tackled. And I said, I can't even begin any kind of scientific theory on that. So um, all I can say is that I've noticed it on, on lots of people. Um, but you can see the lifting that has happened here on Trudy's neck as well. It's absolutely phenomenal. And this was actually after two months of use. This is a lady from our New Zealand trial. Um, all that they were allowed to do was to use One Truth 818 serum. And these are the results that they got. For the independent tests in Italy, which was performed by doctors, they were able to measure that skin, skin firmness was improved by an average of 20.33% and skin elasticity by 8.33%. And that skin elasticity test, they measured how much elastin the cells started producing after applying One Truth 818 topically. So actually activating telomerase topically is an amazing thing because as we know, our cells basically stop producing elastin at least, you know, earlier than your 30s, you know, it starts slowing down, but certainly by these ladies' ages, it, it's not working anymore. 
Forehead wrinkles were decreased by 14.04% and crow's feet and wrinkles by over 11%. So like I said, going to the root cause of aging is gonna tackle all of these conditions. And these pictures are real, they're untouched. Um, these were taken back in the day before One Truth even had a name. Um, so when you go to our website, you might see some testimonies and, and people are just calling it the TAM818 serum. That's why it was um, very early days when these tests were done. And these are some of the pictures that the doctors took um, on their fancy machinery over in Italy and skin smoothness improved by 12 and half percent on the forehead and almost 10% in the eye area, as you can see here. There is no exfoliation. There is no fake plumpers in our products. This is all a result from the TAM 818 being in our serum. Um, we say there's only one truth when it comes to aging because there are lots of theories out there, but the root cause of aging does come down to one thing and that's the telomere, as Bill has so beautifully pointed out. And it's right about now that people usually ask me this question, why aren't we just eating it? Um, sadly, the strongest telomerase activator ever discovered in the world is a synthetic molecule. So we can't just shove it into a tablet and hand it out to you. Um, and that's why we haven't bothered seeing whether or not it would even get through the digestive tract or get into you that way because it would have to become a pharmaceutical drug. And I am sure that um, Sierra Sciences under Bill Andrews will eventually one day get a telomerase activator that is so strong that they then say, okay, we're gonna spend the next 10 years and hundreds of millions of dollars taking this down the FDA route so that there is a tablet everybody can take and have the William Shatner effect on us. Um, but TAM818 isn't quite strong enough yet for us to go down that path and we can't eat it because it's not something created from nature. On that note though, it is less toxic than ginger and less toxic than whiskey. And I'm okay with that, enjoying both of those things. We do have some supplements though, which are fairly new to our range, which tackle um, the two stories of aging. So you've got your telomeres, remember I said you need to keep them as long as possible for as long as possible. And then when they do become senescent, try to clear those away as quickly as you possibly can. And to me, those are, are the two goals of aging, obviously with telomeres being the main goal, having them as long as possible. So in our repair, we have got four published studies, um, proven telomerase activators, even though to just a mild degree, but Bill will always tell you mild is better than nothing. So it's got curcumin and turmeric, carnosine, psilibin, which is milk thistle and astragalicides. Reduced glutathione is a very good antioxidant, which will take care of the free radicals and help slow down the shortening. So we have got lengtheners and something to help slow down the shortening in there. So that's a really great product. All of our products, including our skincare, are all vegan, free from gluten and free from dairy products. And then Eliminate is just going to help clear those senescent cells out, those zombie cells, as quickly as it can. The quercetin and the zinc is going to work in synergy with that. And then we've got some great antioxidants. So if you have a question, please pop it through to us. And we will be able to answer that. I've got a question for you, Bill, which people um, ask me all the time. They say, is it worth getting my telomeres measured through a telomere test? Because I noticed a couple of times you said, you know, we can't measure whether or not we've reversed aging, but there are a lot of people spending a lot of money having their telomeres measured at the moment. What's your opinion on that? Well, I did say there's a lot of biomarkers of aging and telomere length is one of them. Um, but telomeres are very difficult to measure. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't just rely on one test. I would actually get yourself tested several times. Uh, there are several companies that do uh, provide testing. There's actually like three or four different ways to actually measure telomere lengths. Um, but it, it's just, I, I would I would make certain that if you did get your telomeres tested, you get it tested several times and average the results. Uh, I would also recommend that there's other things that you can test that actually are correlated to telomere length. And that's like DNA methylation and uh, glycosylation of some proteins called IgG. Uh, <clears throat> there are uh, 
different different companies that will sell these tests that they're all indirect measures of telemedicine. Awesome. And now I've I've got a question for me actually from Natasha saying how often um, do we use One Truth eight one eight serum? Is it twice a day? That's absolutely correct, Natasha. It is twice a day. All of our before and afters and the independent um, studies and everything and actually we're done using um, the serum twice a day and it does make a big difference. So I'm on a webinar once, I remember Bill saying, you're better to use it more frequently than to lay in a bath of it because activating telomerase more frequently does have a much greater effect. Is that right? Yes. In fact, it, it, our dose curves have shown that if you put a lot on it, it doesn't actually provide you any more telomerase than just put in a little. So it's better to be put in a little often and a lot all at once. Yeah, great. And I know from my point of view, since we've been on the market, there's only been two people who've emailed and said, um, I haven't got the results of your before and afters. I've, I'm still on my first bottle that I purchased seven months ago. And I already know they're only using it once a week, you know, and they're just not seeing the results. Um, there's no William Shatner effect going on with them whatsoever. Um, so can the serum be used with other products from different ranges? Yes, Connie, it can. Um, we were really careful to not put anything in there that could contradict um, any other product ranges because we are a really succinct range. So we are all about telomere lengthening. So I don't want to have 17 different serums. We don't need to because we just go straight to the root cause of aging. But you're going to have those clients who still want to keep on using lots of products because they feel like um, that's fun for them and it's just what they're used to. Um, so there is nothing in the serum which is going to be contraindicative to any other product in any other ranges. Um, does oxidation affect the product? Should it be sealed with a moisturizer? So um, that's from Daniela. We find that nine out of 10 people don't even need a moisturizer because we've got a, it's a light velvet gel serum, not a watery serum. Um, and that's just because I hate water serums. I hate that they run down your hand and you spend lots of money and you lose them. Um, so this is moisturizing enough for a lot of people who then put on their sun protection or their makeup over top. So there's no oxidation um, in the product whatsoever. And, you know, there was so much testing done on TAM818 before we popped it into a product. Um, Bill might remember, before we even began this, we popped TAM818 into water and Jimmy, my mum sprayed it on her hands, Bill. Yes, I, I remember I was shocked when I walked in and she walked up to me and stuck her hands out and I was blown away and I knew exactly what she had done. Yeah. Was incredible difference in her hands. Yeah. And so that, that's something that, um, that was quite interesting because we know with your measurements that TAM818 made it to 16% on your healer scale, but yet we do see visible age reversal going on. And, and that's because the telomerase will preferentially lengthen those critically. Do you yeah. want to explain that for everyone? Yeah. But it's, it's actually explained very well in the video that I had mentioned, everything about telomeres. <clears throat> um, but that is a, a thing that has been just discovered, not just by us, but several labs now, that telomerase preferentially lengthens the shortest telomeres. And so when your telomeres get really short, even 16% of what you need to lengthen telomeres will actually lengthen those shortest telomeres and make them a little bit longer. And so you do see some anti-aging it's a reversal of aging things. That's a theory as to what's going on there, but it, it is the, a good explanation as to why we are seeing this because it's, it is seen a lot with even low levels of telomerase induction causing signs of age reversal. And um, it's, 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 it's explained really well. Uh, I use a tug of war analogy to explain why uh, telomeres are shortening and getting longer depending on the dose of, of telomeres. Mm -hmm. Because when we first started looking at TAM818 on the skin, um, I remember, I think it was one of your scientists said, I don't know if you'll see anything, but in 10 years time, if you've been using it, you'll look better than your friend who hasn't been using it. Well, we've learned a lot in the last 10, 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Even while the trials were happening, it was amazing. Um, what age is it best to start? Is 25 
too young or is 55 too old? When would you start trying to lengthen your telomeres, Bill? I, I think that you should start get, getting your telomeres long, lengthened before you're even born. Uh, it's, it, especially since the things that exist right now do not lengthen all the telomeres. So you still have the longest ones getting shorter. If you can keep, keep minimize that rate of shortening, uh, that'd be good. And the younger you start, the better. Now, I can't speak for what the TGA and the FDA allow for uh, when a certain kind of skin cream, skin cream can be used on people of certain ages. So you'd have to, Richard, you'd have to answer that part of that question. Right, yeah, no, whenever we're completely TGA cleared and safe and um, we can we can pop it on. In fact, I am, um, I mean, my kids are only eight and 11, but if they accidentally get sunburned, I just immediately grab for the One Truth 818 because activating telomerase will help with the healing of the skin. And we've noticed overnight that things like sunburn can be healed. There's another question. Yeah, so that's been really great. And in terms of the product, um, um, Angelique, I would say we've got the, the oil-free atomizer, which is great for people in their 20s who perhaps don't need any of the oils from the serum. And anything 30 onwards, I would be popping them onto the serum. Um, now, I'm asked this all the time, is it too late for me, you know, and I think with Bill saying, you know, because the critically short telomeres are looked after first, the older you are using topical telomerase, the, the faster you're going to see your results, correct? Yes. Well, theoretically, yeah. Yeah. Mutual results suggest so, yes. Yeah. So um, I've got here, if a client has treatments such as high strength peels or laser, can this product be used immediately? The answer is yes. And we probably just answered that in terms of um, how activating telomerase can help with healing as well and speed, speed that up. Um, but also it means while the healing process is happening with all of that cell division, you're trying to look after the length of your telomeres while your cells are dividing. So you're actually having a couple of benefits from there. All right. Yay, you're welcome, Angelique. Do we have any other questions coming through? Yeah, we've got an interesting um, question here and Bill is the perfect person to answer this. Um, can this help in preventing skin cancers, Bill? I think the answer is strongly yes. And that's because we know without a doubt that when telomeres get critically short, that increases the mutation rates that cause cancer. Uh, again, that's something that there's that video that I mentioned before, uh, I discussed that in great detail. There's also another video on my website called Tokyo 2017, where I spend an hour going over excruciating detail why short telomeres cause cancer and lengthening telomeres decrease the risk of cancer. Um, it also boosts the immune system to help you um, uh, fight your cancer. So over here, because you're speaking to, on this call, it's only Kiwis and Aussies, Bill, and we've got the hole right above us on the ozone. So our UV radiation here <clears throat> is just awful, you know. So how much of a part do you think that that is playing in terms of, you know, cancer rates over here in, in melanoma? Well, I, I would say that the, having the hole in the ozone there is, is a major cause of cancer. But uh, so telomere shortening, getting critically short telomeres is only one cause of cancer. You can have other things causing cancer too. Um, but keeping your telomeres long in your immune cells, um, and there are immune cells in your skin, uh, is, is one way to help your body fight cancers. Um, I have a question for you, actually, um, because I use this word, too, when I've been given presentations. I steal it from your book, actually, Bill, when you talk about how smoking will cleave off chunks of DNA, because the imagery there is, is just horrific as to what that can do when people think, ah, oh, I might just have a quick cigarette. Um, so many people have given up smoking now. Would you say the same for vaping? If these ladies have got clients who are vaping saying, it's fine, at least I'm not smoking. What can they say to those clients? Vaping is very hazardous to your telomeres and DNA. Um, but uh, yeah, I, 
and in a lot of my videos, including the ones that I've already mentioned, I do spend a lot of time talking about what's called accelerated telomer shortening. Uh, and it's pretty much, we, you know, my research is to try to slow aging down and stop it and reverse it. But I, I actually spend a lot of time telling people how they can accelerate their aging if they don't, if they think they're not aging fast enough. Uh, that's easy. Uh, but vaping is one of them, smoking is one of them. Uh, anything, any poor lifestyle choices are things. Uh, it's obesity uh, causes accelerated aging. Uh, there's so many things you can do to accelerate the aging process. And they, the aging gets accelerated directly through the telomere shortening. Um, I have a question here about the repair supplements actually saying, can they just use repair without eliminate? The answer is absolutely yes, because uh, you know our focus here is telomeres, trying to clear the senescent cells is sort of an adjunct to that, to people who really want to um, be going nuts about what I call their health longevity. But yeah, just using the repair supplements is going to, we hope, have a small effect on the length of your telomeres. And as I said, there's published studies on four of the ingredients we use in that, saying that they actually are telomerase activators and inducers. And then antioxidants do help slow down the telomere shortening as well. Um, I've got, can 818 prevent or repair pigment disorder? Um, it depends on why the disorder is occurring. Sometimes, uh, Pigment disorders are caused by aging. Sometimes they're caused by the environment. But if they're caused by aging, yes, 818 should help at least decrease the rate. And if short length in the shortest telomeres is reversing it, it could possibly be reversing. But uh, there's some things, some things that lengthening telomeres just won't help with. If it depends on if you have a genetic uh, variant, a gene variant that actually causes the pigment disorder. I, people ask the same question about hair loss and things like that. And I always say, well, it depends on why you lost your hair. Uh, if you've lost your hair because your mother's father was bald and you inherited the gene from your mother, if you're a guy, uh, <clears throat> then lengthening telomeres isn't gonna help. You. But uh, there's a lot of different other reasons why people lose their hair and a lot of them are telomer related. And so a lot of people taking telomeres and inducers have responded that they, their hair came back. Can I put you on the spot here? And I, you may not have an answer for this, but um, I've always been surprised by women who have got pigmentation and it's hormonal. And when we first started running trials and I said to them, no, it's not gonna have any effect. It's if you hadn't have gotten knocked up, you wouldn't have had all those hormones and you wouldn't have that pigmentation. And I was joking with them about it. Yet every single woman in all of our trials, no matter what the cause of their pigmentation was, it all lessened and you know so a lot of it was hormonal because it was that sort of age group of women we were working with i can't explain that do you have a theory for why it's helping with hormonal pigmentation i no in fact i didn't even know that till just now I, yeah so that'd be interesting to look into find out what's going on but, um i'm not certain how the hormones cause hormone decrease or increase causes uh, pigment changes but uh, uh it, it, It'd be worth looking into, especially if you're saying that using 818 caused that to disappear. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, like quite significantly, you know, for, for all of them. So I sort of have to revert to empirical observation for that one. I um, can't explain it any other way. Send me the data. I, I, I'm definitely obsessed with actually now trying to figure that one out. So Oh, I, I will. I hadn't heard the data till just now. Yes, yeah, we even have one woman um, saying her freckles lightened um, and then several other women who had pigmentation from pregnancy, um, one from medication, and it all reduced. So, and, and that was probably the thing that surprised me the most out of that clinical trial, actually. I'll send it all through. I'll be able to have an answer for you ladies soon. Um, Bill, would you be able to discuss the clinical trials that back TAM818, and then I can talk about the trials that back the actual serum. Yeah, we, we've done studies where we have um, treated cells with uh, TAM818 and then uh, measured a lot of different gene expression. So we would do it's called DNA array analysis to look at the uh, genes that get turned on or turned off or 
to varying levels like a dimmer switch for a light. Uh, and we've, we've seen uh, a lot of positive signals there. Uh, but one of the key things is that this hay flick limit that Rachel was talking about. Um, we have seen that the cells do exceed that hay flick limit by about 5% using TAM818. So, uh, and that, that's the major sign of the benefits of telomere length shortening, uh, telomere lengthening. Yeah. And so it was on, on the back of um, the evidence that TAM818 was such a strong telomerase activator. And honestly, putting the TAM818 in, in bottles of water and spraying it all over ourselves, um, we thought we'll just have a little punch with this before we invest so much money. Um, but then when we did formulate the serum, which I worked with a um, chemist to do and then sent it off to Italy. Now they measured with a cutometer and another machine, which isn't like me because I have such a good memory, but I think the problem is I can't pronounce it. And so I keep forgetting the name of it, but they measured the wrinkles with two different types of machines so that they could see um, how much the, the valley of the wrinkle was coming up. And then they measured it from the top as well, which is why we talk about skin smoothness. And like I said, they also measured how much more elastin was being produced from the cells over and above what was being produced beforehand. Because we tested on 100 volunteers, which is unheard of, over 30 days, which is also unheard of in a trial run by doctors. Um, again, we wanted irrefutable proof that topical telomerase activation did work. So they measured all those, they were from 39, no, 35 to 69. So 35 year old cells may have been producing some elastin, 69 year old cells probably weren't producing any elastin. So they were able to measure over and above the elastin being produced on average, how much more elastin was then produced, which is why when you look at our before and afters, you can see eyelids lifted, you could see necks lifted. That's all about the elastin quality and activation happening there. So um, they were, they classed them as statistically significant. The doctors over there was the term that they used. Um, as I said, Bill's scientists were really impressed. They weren't expecting to be able to actually see such a different, what do you call it, Bill? Quantitate, cumulative? Qual qualitatively quantitative qualitatively quantitative um but we also went above and beyond and we made sure because i knew i would be asked this as well um when you do anything in a pioneering way um that the serum was non-mutagenic non-carcinogenic non-sensitizing dermatologic dermatologically tested so um it is the safest serum that you could use oh. It can go right over the eyes. It can go right over the lip area. Um, there's absolutely no, um, like I said, it's TGA passed. So there's, um, yes, we're new, but we are not, we're not cowboys. We're not just throwing something on the market and we've been on the market for, for 10 years now. So I hope that's, those were the questions that you wanted um, answered there, Daniela. We also, we're really proud of our clinical trials um, because as I said, they are over and above um, what, any other skincare company has ever done that I know of. So we have the entire reports that we make available to people if they want to um, have a look at all of those. Um, we're also asked to, Bill, if the molecule is so big, what is the delivery system? Um, should I let you explain that about activating? The, the molecule is not big. The molecule is actually very small. It gets into the cells very easily. What's big is telomerase, the enzyme. So, so when Rachel was talking about telomeres being too big to uh, get in through your, into your cells, that's, that's why you can't actually, there is no way to deliver it effectively. Uh, so what you do is you actually take the small molecule, TAM818, which if you're a chemist, it's, it's the molecular weight of it is 500 grams per mole or 500 dollars. Um, if you take that, it's very, it's, and it follows what's called the Lipinski's rule of five which means it will get into your cells very easily. Uh, that will get inside your cells and then produce telomerase inside the cells. So telomerase is too big to go into the cells, but once it's produced inside the cells, it it's stays inside the cells. Yeah, so, so we're not saying that we're putting telomerase onto your face. Um, TAM818, it's sort of, and the way that I use it too to explain it is it, it's like a, um, 
it attracts the door. So there's a, a repressor or a door on that gene stopping the enzyme from, from coming out and TAM8 when it opens the door. So that, that's another way that you can explain it quite easily um, to your clients. Now, but you there's, there are a lot of things that I'm seeing out now talking about um, telomere support and that kind of thing. And, and it, you know, some of them in a way they're not lying because once they're full of antioxidants, they are going to help deal with those free radicals and they are going to slow down accelerated telomere shortening, but they're actually never going to lengthen your telomeres. So TAM818 is the only molecule on this planet that has actually been proven to be able to lengthen fibroblast skin cells and to make them longer. So if you're not using one truth, 818, then you're not having the ability to lengthen your telomeres in your skin. And I, I can say it as plainly as that.